Hello, welcome to Mini Strategy CP, formerly known as Bolt Action CP. Uh, I changed the name up because <clears throat> I'm getting into different games and didn't want to mislead anyone thinking it's only Bolt Action, which it used to be, but I'm starting to branch out a little bit, so uh, hopefully the name change doesn't throw anyone off. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on painting the Spectre Operations Task Force Operator Grenadier. So this is what um, I'll end up with when I'm all done. I had two of these guys come in a pack, so I did one and I had one left. So I'll be painting them in this uh, three-tone desert. It's an older pattern from the mid-90s, I guess. Um, and when I was in the military, it was a long time ago, but we wore the, uh, even older than this, the chocolate chip ones. And I like that, but it seems like a hard pattern to paint. And frankly, I'm not that good at painting camo. And I like to look at this. I'm doing desert. And I didn't want to just do straight um, sand color. I wanted to do some kind of camo. So I found some pictures online of some operators uh, current that were wearing these so I thought okay that's what I'm gonna do so I went with the three-tone desert and with the olive drab um, webbing so that's what uh, my <clears throat> entire um, task force operator uh, force is dressed in is the same uh, three-tone desert so I'll go ahead and um, get ready so as usual I have my old man glasses so I can see and my wet palette that I'll be using to keep the paint moist so it makes it uh, go on a lot smoother uh, makes it just looks a lot better than using something straight out of the pot so uh, anyway we'll go ahead and get started so the first thing we'll do is we'll start with the um, uniform so for that, um, I'll be using a base of Iraqi sand. I'm going to do these in pretty thin coats. So it'll take two, maybe three coats to get it covered entirely. But uh, in the end, it'll be a nice smooth layer that uh, we can uh, work with to paint the camo over. All right, so we're done with the first coat of Iraqi sand. Uh, you can see it's not great coverage as of yet because it's thinned down quite a bit. But as I said earlier, it'll adding multiple thin coats like this of watered down paint actually is better for this type of camo and especially for light color camo. If not, it globs on and just looks real thick. So I'll go ahead and let this dry a little bit and then I'll come back and do a second and possibly a third coat of the uh, Iraqi sand. Uh, so I'm done with the uh, base of Iraqi sand. So I went through and did about three coats, real light. Um, goes on nice and smooth that way. All the details will still uh, pop out in the next step, which is going to be, I'm going to put a pretty watered down wash of Agrax Earthshade over it. So I'm going to get my uh, wash brush, which I use just a softer, longer bristle brush. And it's got some water in the uh, bristles still. I'm going to shake this up, and then I'm going to just go over the uniform with the watered down wash so I'll just get down in the recesses and add a little shadow you don't want it too dark because it'll pool in the uh, crevices and it'll just be like a black spot in there so I'll go ahead and take care of that part alright so I got the wash on um, I thinned it down pretty good so but it still goes into the recesses like there in the cargo pockets but it doesn't go in super dark so it'll 
add just a little bit so it won't overpower the um, camo we put on. This is light, a light colored camo pattern. So, and plus, if you water it down, it it goes easier into the recesses and like between the body armor there and the uniform, it'll uh, flow down into there pretty good. So, and I also forgot to mention I did paint the weapon in the same color, and I did use a little bit darker wash on the weapon because I want the want it to have more contrast because there's not really a lot of contrast on the weapon so the wash will help you know get down in there and bring out the uh, details a little bit now what I'll do is I'll let this dry and then I'm gonna get I'm gonna go back over it again with the um, Iraqi sand watered down at this time instead of just slopping it on like I did I'm gonna leave the recesses um, as are, as they are so that it I'm just gonna go over the flat parts with the watered down Iraqi sand to uh, lighten it up a little bit and bring that um, sand color back out so once this dries I'll I'll do that step So I went back over the Iraqi sand with the wash over it with another layer of uh, watered down, not quite as watered down, Iraqi sand. And that was just to uh, bring the big part, big flat parts back up to a lighter color. So it's a lighter look uh, when it's completed. You could leave it uh, with the wash or you could dry brush it if you want. But I think it looks better if you just... Uh, do direct painting instead of dry brushing. It takes a little longer. Uh, that's probably the longest step in this whole thing was the part I just did was trying to, because you have to leave, you know, all the recesses like in the pockets there. So you have to paint around all that. So it takes a little bit of time, but in the end it's worth it. Even though we're going to be covering most of this up with camo, uh, the parts that do stick through uh, will be lighter and It'll just look better in the end. So I also forgot to uh, go over the weapon, but I'll do that. And the next step will be uh, camo. So the camo, I use um, German camo uh, World War II beige or German camo beige World War II. Uh, and these will be for the big splotches on the pants. So with this pattern, it's the light color, and then there's a little bit lighter color over it and big blotches. And then there's a um, brown, you know, just brown lines that kind of go around the camo beige parts in irregular shapes. But they're all just um, lines, wavy lines. I kind of hug the... Uh, German camo beige color so I'll go ahead and do a I'll highlight the weapon real quick and then I'll go in and start putting the blobs on with the German camo beige and th another step you want to water it down and do multiple coats uh, on here because if not it'll look blotchy if it's too if the paints too thick so you'll you'll have to go in do the big blotches let it dry so you, and you can see them a little better then. Then you can follow the outline of the blotch with um, the German camo beige. So I'll go ahead and do that part. All right, I finished the um, German camo World War II beige blobs. So there's not too many of them. Um, you're supposed to leave, you don't want to put too much of that on. Probably like uh, a third of the model covered in it because there is quite a bit of the uh, underlying uh, lighter uh, Iraqi sand color uh, on this pattern. So I finished that up. Um, I did both coats uh, at the same time. I started down here, worked my way around 
by the time I got up here it was dry enough down here and I went around again so you're gonna want to wait for the uh, a little bit for it to dry so that you can see it because when you first put it on you can't really see the pattern uh, the camo beige uh, blobs on there too well because they don't really stand out too much but that's how the pattern is the uh, secondary color isn't really all that different than um, the base color is so I did that uh, I don't know if you can see it or not uh, with this lighting kind of sucks but uh, you can kind of see it there so next thing I'll do is I'll do the really distinctive part of this whole pattern and that's the uh, brown the little brown uh, stripes that are on it and for that I use this uh, mahogany brown color because the stripes are kind of a reddish brown color so and I found this color works perfectly for that so again you want to get that pretty thin down and you want to get a fine point brush because you're going to be putting really thin lines around the edge of these uh, camo beige blobs so the bigger blobs you can do um, two lines on like one on one side one on the other the smaller blobs you want to do just one line on and then kind of alternate so if you have a line on the top of this one maybe put a line on the bottom of this one um, you can mix it up a little bit and put a line pretty close together because it's not there's no um, pattern to it it's just random so so I'll go ahead and um, do the uh, lines now all right so now we are done with the uniform and the camo as you can see it's a pretty simple uh, pattern and it's one of the easiest real life camo patterns to do to make it actually look like the camo that it does in real life I, I think at least a lot easier than uh, multicam or um, the BDU's woodland uh, I forgot what the technical term for it is but um, so anyway now we're gonna start with the uh, LBE or the the uh, webbing pouches stuff like that and for those I've been using this brown violet which is kind of an olive drab color so I'm gonna go through and hit all of the uh, you know harness uh, with it all the pouches the belt uh, and he's wearing gloves and I'm gonna put it make the gloves the same color so I'll go ahead and do that part All right, uh, webbing is now painted with the brown violet. So a few things left, you gotta do the helmet, the boots, these grenades here, uh, sunglasses. So first thing I'll do is I'll, um, I'll do the boots and those are done with uh, German camo medium brown. Uh, boots complete. Now I'm going to do the helmet and the night vision goggles, all the same color. And for that color, I'm using this uh, dark sand. Alright, helmet complete. Um, I forgot to mention I did go over the helmet straps. Uh, with the the uh, olive drab color I got a little bit of the yellow on it but when I'm all done with the skin and everything I'll probably go over it again lightly um, with the uh, brown violet so now the helmet's done uh, I gotta paint these two grenades so for these smoke grenades flash bangs whatever they are I use this reflective green um, so go ahead and get that part knocked out. Alright, so now we got the rest of the colors all blocked in. 
what I'm going to do now is go over those with a wash, uh, Agrax Earthshade again. But I'm going to be careful, I'm going to use a smaller brush and be careful just to go over the parts I just did. Not not get any on the uh, uniform. And this, uh, we'll do this part uh, with pretty dark. We won't water the wash down at all because we want to, we want it to get in and really bring out the depth of uh, like these pads or whatever those things are there and all these pouches and everything so yeah let's do that all right so I got the uh, Agrax Earthshade wash on all the uh, parts uh, I just did so I let it uh, seep down in there uh, give it some depth get underneath all those flaps uh, the helmet you can see it's got some depth to it now so once this dries I'll come back and I will go over all these colors again with the same color just to bring the uh, bring the raised parts up back up to the original color that they are and then that's when we'll start adding the make the depth even look even better because we'll uh, go over it with the original color again then we'll even lighten that up and just go over the really raised parts to add a, a highlight to it so we'll go ahead and let this dry and we'll be back to uh, start highlighting okay now the um, wash is dry and I will now go over <coughs> these colors again with the original colors so the uh, brown violet on uh, webbing, reflective green on the grenade, German camo medium brown on the boots, and kind of a light dry brushing technique on the helmet with the dark sand so it leaves um, the dark colors in the recesses. So I'll start out with the um, brown violet. Alright, brown violet. Um, Highlight one is done. Now I'll go do the boots in German medium brown and the smoke grenades in reflective green. All right, now I'll get the uh, helmet. So this is the only thing in here I usually do a dry brush on is the helmet uh, with the dark sand. So I will do that now. Alright, so done with that part, <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is um, add a, another uh, highlight to the um, webbing. So I'm just going to get a little bit of white and put it in with the uh, brown violet. And then I'll just go over the around the edges, tops of the straps, um, on the pads on our body armor here. And just highlight these pouches. And when the white's out, I'm going to put a little white stripe on the um, grenades. And if you can't uh, paint them straight like I can't most of the time, I'll paint the white stripe best I can. Then I'll get the base color, which is reflective green in this case, and go and straighten them out with the uh, original color by just uh, knocking down the uh, any um, parts of the white that are sticking out on this white stripe. So, and that's pretty much the only highlight. I'm not going to highlight the boots anymore. I'm not going to do the helmet. I haven't done them with any of my other ones. I guess you could get, uh, put some white in with the dark sand and just go over the ridges. Maybe the top of the night vision goggles, but uh, I haven't done that with any of my other ones. So I'm just going to keep this guy uh, the same. So I'll add the white. I'll do the uh, brown violet. And I'll add the white stripe. Uh, to the grenade. All right, so done highlighting the uh, webbing. Just add a little bit of white to it and just, just make, brought a highlight out so it adds to the depth of the wash that we put on. Uh, did the white stripes. They're not totally perfect, but I can only get them so good, so it's good enough. 
Uh, so real quick, I'm going to paint the sunglasses black and the grenade, the tops of the grenades and the pins. I'm going to paint uh, this German gray color. All right, so we're done with the uh, uniform weapons webbing. Now we got to do the skin. He's got a beard. So I think I'll do his beard in uh, German camo black brown. Let's give him a dark colored uh, beard. And uh, that's it for the beard. Yeah, so I'll get that knocked out. <clears throat> All right, now done with the beard. We're going to move on to the part of the model which I hate the most of any of these figures is the skin. So this guy will be a white guy. Um, tan of course because he's been out in the desert. So instead of my normal sunny skin tone I'm gonna be using this flesh base. And then with the flesh base I am going to add in a uh, little bit of um, sunny skin tone no, I'm sorry not sunny skin tone I'm gonna add a little bit of this uh, no, that's the wrong one this one black flesh um, I'm gonna add it in with the uh, flesh base and use that as a highlight and then when that's all done when that's all dry I'm gonna go in with this uh, Reichland flesh shade with a small brush and just go in and cover over the uh, cover over the skin with the wash to bring some add some depth to it. And then I I do need to um, put some uh, Agrax Earth Shade on the beard and then highlight it with the original color and then I will probably add a little white to that just to give the beard a, a little depth too. It's a small piece of the model, but um, it it can help make it look a little better so I'm just going to do all those uh, all those steps in a row alright so done with the skin uh, it's not that great I've never been that great at doing skin but uh, he doesn't have a lot showing so it's not too bad so now I'm done uh, with the model itself so now I gotta do the base so I'm gonna cover it with uh, dark sand and then let it dry All right, the dark sand is dried now I'm going to put a wash on the base. I usually don't wash bases, but kind of with this desert uh, colors, it needs some help adding a little depth to the base. So I'm just going to get my uh, um, wash brush and add a wash. All right, so now the uh, Agrax Earthshade wash is dry on the base. You can see it added uh, much needed depth to the sand. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to um, dry brush over the top of this again with dark sand. And then I'm going to take some of this Iraqi sand and do a light dry brush over the top of that. And then I'm going to paint the edge of the base in uh, dark sand. And then I'll take one of these um, desert colored um, grass uh, tufts and put it on the base somewhere. And that'll be it. So I'm going to go ahead and just do all three of those uh, steps uh, right now. All right. So there we have it. Task force operator in three-tone desert complete. Uh, it's pretty fast, um, it's not a professional paint job by any means, but it uh, works for me. It's good tabletop quality. Um, like I said, it's relatively fast to do. 
So there he is. Um, put him in with his brothers. So I broke out the rest of my uh, task force operators. Now that I'm pretty much done with the force, um, I might add a few more eventually. Um, not sure. I got some uh, regular straight leg uh, infantry guys coming in pretty soon I need to do, but I wouldn't mind to add a couple more guys in. Um, so I have uh, two saw gunners. I use these as uh, compact LMGs. Uh, everyone's got red dot and scope and laser. And if you know how to play the game, you know what that means. It gives you a good bonus to uh, roll on your roll to hit. Um, what else do I got here? I got a couple of SMGs. Here's one. And the other is this guy. You got two guys in t-shirts, which are cool. This kind of mixes it up a little bit. And got a couple of shotguns. Uh, AA-12, fully automatic shotgun. This guy is a really cool model. And my other shotgun is on my breacher. He's got a shotgun. I don't know what kind. I think a semi-auto shotgun. He's got a breaching kit. Got a, a wire or a bolt cutters. Looks like a couple crowbars. Shotgun and he has an M4. Uh, the rest of these guys are all carbines. So he's kind of like a commander. Uh, another t-shirt guy and grenadier uh, this is the other grenadier I just painted so he fits right in with the rest of the guys and another carbine and another carbine and they got the beard and I got these uh, ghillie suit snipers. Came out okay. Uh, I didn't know how to paint ghillie suits, so I kind of just winged it. Um, put camo on the rifle. Came out pretty good. This is the guy with the heavy sniper rifle, 308. So it's a uh, pretty good force. Um, I don't think I, I don't know if I would ever play a game where I use this many operators at once. That's why I'm kind of leaning towards not getting any more and working on other stuff. But there are some other t-shirt guys I would like to get. Um, I'd like to get the commander model too. So anyway, that's my uh, task force operators for, uh, force. And I hope to do a battle report soon with these guys against the ter my terrorists. And... It should be fun. So anyway, I hope that uh, this might help somebody and paint their own models or get some ideas on how to do stuff or whatever. But um, thanks for watching and uh, we'll be back for uh, another video soon.